In the previous segment, we witnessed the synergy of our Autogen agents as they meticulously analyze damage from images. This time, we're taking a significant leap forward by empowering the inventory manager with the capability to perform live database queries. This enhancement taps into SQLite, a lightweight yet robust database to check the availability of crucial spare parts. As depicted in the table, it holds a detailed inventory, including items like Tesla windshield and Porsche brake pad, along with their quantities and prices. With this setup, the inventory manager can provide up-to-the-minute stock updates, bridging the gap between damage assessment and the crafting of a personalized email to the customer, all with pinpoint accuracy and efficiency. We will use function mapping to clearly define how our Autogen agents interact with different functionalities. First, we create a function declaration like get inventory declaration, which serves as an identifier. This declaration includes the function's name and a description, essentially a contract stating what the function does, retrieving the inventory list. After establishing the declaration, we associate it with the appropriate agent. By adding get inventory declaration to the functions list within the inventory manager configuration, we're instructing the inventory manager about the existence of the get inventory function and how to invoke it. This mapping ensures that when the time comes, the inventory manager knows exactly how to execute the function to obtain the inventory data. Then, get inventory contains the actual implementation to query databases. It establishes a connection with the SQLite database, inventory.db, and executes a query to retrieve all records from the inventory table. But enough theory. Let's roll up our sleeves and dive into the practical side of things. We pick up right where we left off, because who needs new beginnings anyway? First, to access the inventory, we create a file named inventory.py. In this file, we import SQLite3, which will represent our database. To streamline the video, I've already prepared the methods for communication with the database and will paste them in. The first one, setup database, is responsible for creating the database and its tables. As you can see, it first establishes a connection to inventory.db. Think of it as dialing into a secret channel. Once connected, it wields a cursor, the magic wand, to interact with our database. The setup database method proceeds to execute an SQL command. This command is like an instruction that tells the database exactly how we want to set up our table, specifying columns for part and ID, part and name, quantity, and price. After executing the command, it prints a simple message saying, table created successfully, to let us know everything went as planned. Moving on to the insert sample data method. The method reconnects to our inventory.db file, and then inserts a list of items into the table. These items are parts, such as Tesla windshield and Porsche tire, each with an assigned quantity and price. Finally, get inventory is our seeker. It quests into the depths of the database, retrieves all the rows of data with a well-crafted query, and then maps them into a list of dictionaries, because who doesn't love a good map? It's here that each part is accounted for, ready to be displayed, used, or admired. Now we can test the functions and even insert data into the database. We call the setup database and insert and sample data functions in succession. We see a message that the tables were created successfully. We can now actually make queries against the database using the SQLite 3 console program. And it looks good we are retrieving the data from the database. Now let's put our get inventory method through its paces. And it looks promising. The method successfully retrieves all the data from the database. Next, we need to enable what's called function mapping. The first step is to create a declaration of the method. This ensures that the Autogen agents know the name of the method and what it does, and if in doubt, 
with which parameters it must be called. It's all quite straightforward because we pass no parameters. We want the whole data banquet, not just the appetizers. We import the method and its declaration into our app.py and extend the configuration of the inventory manager so that it knows this function exists and what its purpose is. The user proxy gets the exclusive right to execute the method because too many cooks will spoil the database broth. For this, we map the function using the function map keyword. It's crucial to note that in our scenario, the inventory manager is aware of the method's existence but doesn't execute it directly. Instead, it recommends that the user proxy execute the method and then uses the results to formulate its response. Finally, we ensure that the process is properly terminated when one of the agents returns terminate. The isTerminationMessage method checks if the provided data contains a non-empty content field and returns true if terminate is found within this content. We put our creation to the test and voila, the user proxy receives the return value, no applause necessary. Let's take a moment to celebrate this achievement. We now have an agent capable of accessing databases opening up a world of possibilities for us. But there's a plot twist. The process ends too soon, like a detective novel missing the last page. It seems that the customer support agent is terminating the process before it's completed. To fix this, we remove step four so that the terminate message is only executed when the customer support agent has formulated the email. We try again, and we see that the email was successfully formulated, and this time with real data from the database, including the price of the spare part.